Hello, welcome to Salisbury Anarchy. The year is still 504. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly, uh, let, let's, let's do something different. Let's see here. Uh, Thomas, name the food that you want to eat the most right now. Like not this moment, but like, what do you, what do you crave in general? I crave pho, Vietnamese noodles. That's what I want. Yeah, mm. that's fair. That's fair. Broom. Uh, Broom. We'll go to we'll go to Mark next. What about you, friend? Hello, I'm Mark. Uh, in case I catch me out, and I am a lamb fiend. I love me some lamb. Yeah, I could really go for some lamb. I just had lamb actually. I mean, kind of like a Greek Greek restaurant lamb, so it wasn't quite mm, and, and nah, somewhat yes. fast foody Greek Greek restaurant. So we'll, the the validity yeah, of yeah. the the lamb part of it is not confirmed, but. Uh, that's not to think about it. That's yeah. not to think about it. <laughs> Liam. Uh, hi, everybody. God, I would fuck up some lamb alive right now, but I actually just had dinner, so I'm feeling something more desserty. Um, I think I would love to have a batch of like. Oh, you know what? Actually, I just recently tried a recipe for making a s'mores milkshake that was so fucking good. I would fuck one of those up right now. It is such a mess, though. Melted marshmallows are not easy to work with. Broccoli. That's fair. It's fair. Uh, I'm going to go normally like nine times out of ten, I'd say something with steak. But uh, today, right now, I'm feeling rhubarb pie, strawberry rhubarb pie. It might be that oh, there's yeah. a strawberry rhubarb pie with my name on it because it's Canadian Thanksgiving weekend right now. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, well, you don't want to up the stakes too much before we even get started. Hey. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, I see let, how it is let's... making us hungry before we begin, so we'll make mistakes. Yes, right. Make a make an indulgent test now. Um, no, um, that's one of my many weaknesses. Uh, so let's let's uh let's dive in. We're gonna do some vignettes here. Um, we're gonna start with. Virgil, uh, actually. I love Virgil. I love and when it, you spend time with Virgil. Yeah, so we're going to start with what randomly happens with you, because that's always fun. No, nothing ever bad comes from those ones, right? So <laughs> that should be just fine. Why don't you give me 2D100? Let's see what uh, what was yeah, randomly up in the realm of... Not Grand like train. the last time this happens, well, some of my guys burnt a whole family alive. Uh, okay, 68 and 72. 68 and 72. All Ooh, right. Who's burned alive this time? Yeah. Who's burned alive this time? Coincidentally, burning and children. Oh, fun. Great. <laughs> love that. Love that. Thanks, Oracle Table. We love you. Okay. That is that is an interesting one. Uh, maybe we'll we'll start with this uh, with Virgil, and then we'll find out if he takes matters into his own hands or if he consults with Edric on it. Because of the the state of things, with you guys taking over the city of uh, Wanderboro or M Marlboro, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there is rumors just, you know, you're in, in Devices, which is just south of that, effectively. Correct. There there are a lot of rumors of um, an increase in bandits on the road right now. And it's creating a lot of chaos with supply lines. Um, especially with any supply lines that try to stay out of Escavalon claimed territory now. Sort of like forces the supply lines north uh through the forest sauvage which is not ideal and then on top of that the you know the forest that kind of separates clarence from from uh, gentian is is really close to you and it's apparently filled with all sorts of bandit activity now now you'd actually have to like leave salisbury with a conroy or two to try and dispatch justice in this area and it technically is overreaching in the sense of you know this is a are you going to ask for forgiveness or permission kind of thing like do you want to assume assume 
uh, approval and just go. Uh, it's, yes. You know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I assume so. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, like, who, who are we asking forgiveness from? Fucking Betagrain, the guys that we conquered? Yeah, no, no. It'd be, no. It'd be forgiveness from the... Edric and, and Robert and such for oh, just well, deciding. Robert... Yeah. Robert adores me and yep. Edric owes me, so I'm gonna just gonna solve the problem. Hey. Edric also adores you. <laughs> okay. Alright, so we're gonna start with a couple of rolls here. Uh I need a just test. Uh oh. Um and now I need a sword. Uh, oh. <laughs> great, great follow up for that. Yeah, yeah. sword. Um, hunting. Oh, I just upped that. Success and battle. I just upped that too. Wow, threes on all of them. Well, that was a huge Very... delay for me. Perfect. It all came through now. Well, there you go. Good three, Lord. three's your magic number right now. Um, so the positive side is you guys are very successful in your campaign against the bandits. The negative Hell side yeah. is that you don't decipher a friend from foe. If they're commoner and they look like the threat, man, woman, child, they go down. Maybe not yeah. child. Yeah. Those, um, no, no, you have no idea how armed those children might be. And, no, I, I think children yeah. are off nice. limits. Too. I think yeah. children. I think children, and honestly, uh, women probably too are off limits. Just on terms of like, women don't usually. I don't. I don't know if. Oh, uh, I don't know. Te Here, I got. I got a plan for this. Test vengeful for me. Test vengeful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a success on vengeful. So, here's what happens. Basically, along your way, while while you're riding through. You pass up uh, a woman with two children, and when you um, like turn, you feel that's when you feel uh, the sharp twinge of the dagger that she's just buried in your side. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, according to my honor code, now I absolutely can murder this woman, and I'm going yeah, to. Yeah, I think. I think um, with the fumble on just too, it's like you aren't really drawing a line here. Now you're drawing. We can we can stay with the code of honor and like the idea of you not cutting down unarmed women or children. But you you get into almost that that guerrilla warfare concern of what are they posing as? Anybody, and you, yeah, anybody can be. Yeah, yeah, I think that absolutely meshes with his code. It's like. The, the entity of the commoners now has established themselves to be capable of. Maybe you don't uh, kill them, but you lock them away till they're not a threat just while you're dealing with the purging right now. And then and then you release yeah. them after yeah. the uh, the children from this woman. Um, are, do they have other family to take care of them or is it just the mother? Uh, I mean, Obviously, now that she's dead, I might not even know. I don't think you'd know because yeah. I don't think she had the the men around, which is why you let her pass. Yeah. Okay, well, in that case, uh, uh, Virgil would take those children on as his wards, I guess, peasant wards, but like wards, you know. He's not gonna let them. He's not gonna let them starve. But yeah. So when you say that you're taking them on as your like as your peasants, as your commoners, not as Cor correct. Not yeah, he's gonna make sure they're taken care of, not as heirs or anything like that, you know. But they're they're it's feeding and sleeping amongst your commoners, not not staying in as guests in your castle. Um not learning how know. to not learning the highborn like activities. I don't, yeah, I I I don't know. Cause it's like they're young I, I imagine they're young enough that that stuff could be taught to some degree. It depends. How how much of a social faux pas is it? Oh, like quite, obviously it's not common quite high before anarchy anarchy it'd be more like anarchy is expensive especially now london gone um yeah you guys are expecting major hits next year for your crops just because there's likely to be additional concerns with 
uh, with costs um, from London port being gone. Uh, and the only other sort of major protocol would probably be Carline up in Scavalon. So and you're here's what not I'm allied thinking. with either. <laughs> so yeah, here's what I'm thinking. I just crit on arbitrary, and that was my my thinking on that was. Uh, Virgil's got enough dosh that he can at least host these kids for a year, right? The idea behind it being like, okay, well, even though I was very justified in killing your mother, that still sucks for you. You're, I'm going to make sure you guys are taken care of until we organize something better for you with the rest of the peasantry, and then you can be released into that. But... Uh, obviously, he might extend their stay if that's necessary, but I, I think that's kind of where his head's at with this. Because, like, fuck it. Who's going to tell him not to do this? That is fair. So what we'll do there is... What is your generous score? Uh, quite high. 17. 17? Okay. I think you yeah, tick... I rolled it anyway, but... I think arbitrary goes up to 17 and you tick generous. Yes, yes. Yeah. Give me more true knight status until it's gone in five years. It's gone and you become oh, a villain. Oh, it won't be gone. <laughs> nah. No, it won't be gone. I'll be something else. Yeah. Okay, um, that that is fair. All right, and then you will get... Um, uh... Two children. Hello there, children. Master Skywalker. You get 40, 45 glory for leading this little eradication exercise. God, yes. I love glory. Um, and I will name the children in a moment. Um, Take, I'll do that. Yeah. It takes you basically from spring to summer to do that. From Easter to summer. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. We will uh, we'll change gears real quick to Edric. Hello. Edric, um, before we dive into what happens to you, uh, we need to make a decision because you're a marshal. You need to decide if you're preparing any sort of activity that is offensive in the spring because they would have to muster. So is there any, any targets of over a couple of Conroy's worth of men? You actually have to use logistics and movement around and such. Indeed. I will say that Edric's priority is a defensive one uh, because he knows that uh, Wessex is likely to attack uh, and attack through devices. Uh, there's no target that Edric would plane. want to actually... Duplane, got you. Yeah, wrong way. Um, there's no place where Edric would want to attack first. Um not without overextending his army uh, because Saxons have numbers uh, and if we have the defensive strategy that's one we can use uh, there Imagine will be that. a muster however because uh, we need everyone at a moment's notice uh, to come to the defense of Salisbury okay so just want to clarify no response directly to Wareside Manor attack oh got you and no um, uh no, nothing above like a couple of conroys basically um yeah, and then the other I about the weir side yeah, thing the the other um, the other one that you talked about previously is the royal uh castle yes in salisbury uh the royal castle his plan isn't to take it uh if anything um convincing Ulfius about the importance of it and splitting it uh, would be better. Uh, you are right about the Weirside Hundred. Um, previously, he didn't take any men away from the west, uh, so that place is still garrisoned. I think he would try to snatch back as much as he can, uh, but not with a full contingent. Okay. Understood. All right. We'll, well see how we'll see how deeply these monsters hold on to what's theirs. Are you leading it? Or are you assigning someone to do that? I'm leading it. Might as well. I uh, these fairies have tried to steal my son. Uh, I think his inner vengeful is coming out. Okay. Let's see if there's any interruption. Why don't you roll me a d uh, ten real quick? 
Eight. Nope. That's not um, good or bad. No. Uh, so this is going to kind of go off without any adjustments to it. So I think we're going to do a very similar thing. I think this is more counter raids versus conquering. Um, uh, so you can counter raid into the forest around that area if you'd like. Uh, why don't we do battle uh, sword hunting? Battle is a success, a low one. Sword is a critical. Uh, and let's do hunting. I should have increased my hunting, but I didn't. Uh, and so I fail, but I do you, not fumble. You do not fumble. That's that's always a positive thing. It's not fumbling, because that's when things get really bad. Um, Indeed. <clears throat> Uh, now, my friend, we will test two D one hundred. Let's see. Oh yay! Yeah, well, you're in the forest. Um, I think you hit a patch of fog, and then you lose some of your men. Um, we'll see what the outcome of that looks like while you're there. You think fog scares me? Forty-five and seventy-six. Try to think. Who, uh. Oh. I know. Oh, no. As you're riding through the forest, you know, you hit that patch of fog and then you kind of round back and you try to try to follow the trail. Uh, you actually have to leave your horse for a while to kind of look for tracks and stuff. You start to hear the sound of horses sort of around you in the, in the forest. And movement of feet. Damnation. Um, Edric is ready for a battle or diplomacy, either one. Uh, but to be caught without his horse is inconvenient. Uh, despite that, Edric will stand tall uh, amidst the disorienting fog. Uh, does it seem like they're circling to get him, or does it seem like they're riding past? Uh, you did do well in battle. You feel like you're being surrounded. Grand. It's not a good sign. You, um... Hail and well met, uh, Edric will say. The men that come out, uh, herald reroll plus ten. Yay! Da, 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 da. Nope, that's nineteen. Ten. Success. They're wearing the coat of arms of Lord Alabaster. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> um, uh, in that case, uh, Edric will say, "Oh, good, familiar faces." Hmm. They approach. They say. We have orders. One of the knights says, We have orders, Sir Edric. You're, and what are these orders? You're to be taken and ransomed once more. I've known your hospitality before, and indeed you have sought to make me experience it again. A third time? I think not. You would rather face death, then? I decline your generous invitation. If that means we are to do battle, so be it. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to see just how many men we're talking here. I'm, yeah. I'm going to warn uh, you, uh, this could like be anything, considerable. This could be quite bad. If there were anything over five i think he'd be way more troubled and i didn't give you a number yet right i just said you felt like you're being encircled you just said yes felt like i'm being circled okay let's start with a battle test Absolutely. see if you can tell what kind of numbers you're dealing with here come on big money okay. uh 14. eight oh no uh do they look well equipped like all of them knights to a man 
Uh, no, I would say probably four or five of them are knights, and then two or three are like auxiliary. Mm. Five of them probably are knights. Ah, uh, this is rough, but I have plans for Summerland, and I can't be ransoming off myself again. I need all the money I can get. You could try, you could try to break for your horse and like get out of here. It, it will mean that you're basically in defense and there will be penalties for kind of doing that sort of action. You know what I mean? But you do get that plus 10. So you will be able to split. Um, it depends on how quick and how many of them can attack you on your way out for that kind Indeed. of action. But that would be the. Have horses. Yeah. I'm wondering, would it be more uh, appropriate to defend and run, or can I, in an explosion of violence, kill one, take his horse, and run? Well, you have your horse. Because their still. horses are right here. Oh, I thought I got off my horse and had to leave it. No, you got off your horse to, like, check the ground. Like, it's still there. In that case, I'm running. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, Starbot. Welcome in. Hopefully not a bot. We'll see. Um, <laughs> oh, it sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, well, they followed me, so that's either good or bad. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Okay, Edric, here's what we're going to do. Hold on. We'll change to some quick music here. Uh, do, do. I admit, anything less than eight, I'd probably be more fine with fighting. <laughs> that's, that is fair. Okay, so, um, don't get captured again. Don't get captured again. Come on, Edric. What I what I need you to do is, uh, I think some of these are going to be contested. I just need a horsemanship roll. I think because you're you're doing multiple things here, um, I'm going to have you. Uh, split your 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 horsemanship's at what twenty as well? Uh, my horsemanship is sixteen. Horsemanship sixteen. You're going to be working from a sixteen rather than a twenty-seven here, and you Actually, have right. an unknown number of attacks coming your way this round as you go to get up. So you need to tell me every horsemanship failure doesn't represent a. Uh, a fall off the horse. It just represents you having to split, trying to get the shield up, trying to get on the horse. You, I, I will give you, if you wish to, you can do a full defense, which will give you that that plus 10, right? But I think you're suffering think, from the split yeah. at the same time. I think I would like to do a full defense, and I think I would certainly like to try and impassion <laughs> I don't want to die to Lord Alabaster's men who got captured again, the indignity. Yeah. Yeah, impassion yourself, let's start with that. Um, I feel... This is my family's prosperity on the line. I would like to roll that. However, it is an exalted passion. If you want me to do something uh, a little less dramatic, I could try for honor at a 16. Well, what was your justification? You said, what was your primary justification when you said, I can't afford to do that? If it's a matter yes, of I, pride indeed. and honor, then it's honor. But if it's a matter of I need to get home to my family, which I didn't hear, or I need to look out for my duties as, as um, uh, it's uh, it is I need to look out for my family because I am putting a lot of money into different places, and uh, they can't afford to do that and ransom me. They can't okay. actually afford to ransom me. I'll, I'll we accept are low that. on funds. I'll accept that. So then, why don't you do? Why don't we lead with that then? Let's do it. Uh, that is a success on love family. Uh, this is full defense. Uh, sword uh, and shield, both of them alike, uh, providing as much defense and coverage as possible. Getting on the horse and trying to get back on track. It doesn't matter if I don't go back to my men. I just have to lose some of these people so I'm not surrounded. Okay, so what I need to know is how many out of uh how many times are you splitting 
Should we assume an even split across the amount you're splitting just for purposes of this? Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Or it's going to be that's... it's going to be mental mayhem yeah, otherwise. Six, indeed. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Ah. Uh, I can manage that so long as I've got the plus 10 from defense. It's a matter do all 8 attack, which I don't even have the answer for that. We will determine that. So it's a matter. It is a gambling game. You could go, I'm only going to worry about two and then get six attacks on you, right? Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to worry about eight from 16, because otherwise an even split is too inconvenient mathematically. I can't have any of these people uh, so get a lucky crit. That how is many? Uncontested. How many? Uh, eight. How many divides? Eight total divides? Eight total. So two. Uh, which me leaves me with a base of two. So, okay. Okay. Uh, okay so... I will warn you that five of them are mounted, right? Um, mm -hmm. That will give me a minus five. Um, You're unmounted, yes. You have five coming your way. <laughs> Okay. Three mounted and two archers. Uh, I'm going to roll against uh, the archers first. Archers attack you outright easy. first. Yeah. Oh, right. first. In that yeah. case, let's have them do their thing. Yeah. She might just get pelted with arrows. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> Uh, and then Archer one. Ah, Press why? It. Oh why? my! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! I heard that. That I'm is not even, painful. I'm, I can't see the screen, but I can hear. Uh, so. Do I apply my shield to that yes. or no? Uh, well... Okay, good. Sorry, you don't apply your shield. You get your armor in full. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's 23 damage, which means I am uh, unconscious and have a major wound. Uh, unless oh, there's oh, any way to resist that, that first archer shot got me. <laughs> they got you again! They got me again! They got you again. <laughs> Those you saw already. Yeah, you you will be you. like Edric. Edric has one weakness: missile weapons. That's it. And they just <laughs> <laughs> they just always crit him. Always. This is like the third time you've been crit with missile weapons. Is Edric? I think he's got an Achilles everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Straight up. Um, they have that heat-seeking arrow or whatever. <laughs> Goes right for Edric's uh, vitals. Okay. Well, the good news is you're not dead. Um, in, in 23, well, what's your, you're, you're into the unconscious zone, is that correct? Like, uh, my total hit points are 28, uh, so after I lose 23, I'm at 5, which is below 7. Okay, so level. one more concern. You are falling off your horse right now. I need you to roll oh, a d6. I, I got back on my horse? Okay. Yep, that was, uh, that was your declaration, that's why you're splitting yep. horsemanship. You got no, up. No, no. I, yep. I, I'm glad I had the opportunity before uh, before uh, I got shot. Okay. Uh, rolling a d6. Mm. <laughs> Good. Not in the negative. Ah, oh, goddamn it. <laughs> that fell for your horse and fucking died. for my horse and fucking died. The ultimate dirt eating. Yeah, you know, that would actually be pretty fun. If um, <laughs> if the archer comes out and the kind of the last thing you see is your own face. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think no. They're not going to kill you. Their their goal is to take you ransom, to take you hostage. Um. Oh come on! I was going to give Stumbleland mercenary support. <laughs> Uh, Three I'll times. get the money back somehow. Three times <laughs> Three these assholes. Times. Twice they've succeeded. Um. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I don't know how many attribute points I'm going to lose uh, from the major wound, 
by God, I will strangle the life from Lord and Lady <laughs> Alabaster. <laughs> they really are a problem at this point. Yes. But to, but to be fair, you were raiding into their allies' lands. So it's not like random Honestly. this time. They raided yeah. into my lands! Well, yeah. Honestly, Te for... Technically, they didn't. <laughs> but just for reference for the audience, literally before the, the stream, while we were setting things up, Thomas was just talking about how he wanted to kill the Alabaster League. <laughs> They were a problem, and they remain a problem. Fucking <laughs> get them. <laughs> Luckily, the rest of our assault hopefully went better than mine. We should probably address the major wound. That's probably what we should yes. do. Yeah. Just pull Let's off the bandaid. How Ma embarrassing. How embarrassing indeed. Okay, so. Okay, uh, so. Major wound stuff. Uh, surgery is needed. Yeah, we'll assume you're gonna get care because they they want to they want to ransom you, right? Am I just like a piggy bank for these people? <laughs> Edric's like, you know what? I'm just gonna die. Fuck these people. Yeah. Fuck these people. What's your um, prudent, so, good sir? Uh, my prudent is eleven. No, it's not anymore. Roll a d4. Let's do it. Okay. Your reckless goes up by four. Your prudent goes down by four. Hell yeah! Um, in my in my defense, if that crit hadn't happened and the others weren't crits, and I could have applied my shield, I'd be way better off. I think a little Zedra bit of reckless. Is a killing machine. The problem <laughs> is missile weapons. I think a little bit of reckless <laughs> makes sense for Edric. He leads from the it front. It definitely does. Right. If this. If this had happened in a different state and I was wearing a different pair of underwear and also <laughs> they were armed with different weapons entirely. Yeah. This never I would have wouldn't happened. have shit myself. And the, and the moon um, phase was different. Um, so Indeed. Yeah. If the moon phase was different, oh, these people. Uh, shall I roll 2d6 to sort out attribute loss? Uh, I think you... So you don't... You're not aging. You just get the attribute loss. So you roll 1d6. Gotcha. So just yeah. roll a d6. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two. <laughs> it's not size. It's it's Dex again though. Uh, Why? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> this man's full legs. <laughs> I've got polio now. It, it kind of feels like um yeah, if you ever watch Red vs. Blue, there's a fight scene with Agent Texas where Agent <laughs> Texas just keeps hitting Griff in the dick over and over again. <laughs> yeah. I think they're doing that to you, Thomas. <laughs> Wow. Really feels like it. I don't um, like it. What does that bring your dex to? Six. Wow. But you're actually more capable. Like, just to play this out too in, in your head, you are way more in danger of fighting on your feet now than you are fighting. So if you even if you absorb a big hit with your shield, you make that yeah. reeling roll with the dex, you're more likely to land on your ass. More likely to fall on a exactly. horse, though. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah, on a horse, I can count on the stirrups actually holding me in. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting. Welcome to forties, my friend. <laughs> Your own body's <laughs> failing you. Um, my, my body. He used to. Here's the thing: all of these people with magic, none of them can cure my arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> now that puts you at thirteen reckless. It does. That's not that crazy. Does it pull you out of any of your goals? No. Yeah, didn't think so. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's it, it makes sense. You're not superly famously reckless. You're just more reckless than you are prudent with your actions. Yes. I think that's reflective uh, he, of you. He's a very intense person, but also he's a planner. It's just most of the time, the first step of the plan is hopefully nothing bad happens. Then I can do what I want. <laughs> well, also, there's kind of like the there might be a war, and I'm the marshal of my city or my my county. Exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna go lead this raid from the front, which is very Arthurian. I'm not I'm not critiquing you that way, but also Just sometimes no. lucky. <laughs> yeah, very unlucky. Sometimes your enemy uh, archer is Legolas, and that just happens, man. you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, Legolas, and this guy again causing me problems. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Indeed, Lasovruha. Yeah. Uh, but yep, I got got. 
Uh, that's the uh, end of that. Um, uh, I... Sorry, friend. I was not anticipating that series of activities. What I rolled, just so you no, know, too, is I got... Um, what was your roll there? Just I just want to explain it to you. 45 and 67? That's right. At 76. For, uh, for C's rival. This Bastard. I'll feed him. I'll yeah, feed him and, and that just made I'll sense. Like, you're attacking his allies. Yeah, his men are gonna find you. You're a target. You're a prime target, right? So, uh, and the failed hunting. I think if you didn't fail the hunting, you would have had your men still. All that stuff. So, indeed. Uh, anyways, but yes, unfortunate. But uh, let's. You're alive. I can and mostly in good indeed. places, and they will probably mostly. Uh, I think. I think. Salisbury is in dire enough straits where they will probably ransom you this summer. And it will probably be Salisbury because I don't think your house is going to be able to afford the 100 Librum they're going to call for your head. Yeah, I can afford 100 Librum. I can't do that and do the thing I was planning on doing. Which, hmm, hold on. Can I quickly check honor? Uh, what, what, why, what, what's your th um, theory or what's your motive? Let's start there. Yeah. I, I generally, I, I made a oath to myself uh, and a promise of assistance, uh, to, uh, Nineveh to help Summerland. And I do want to help Summerland. That said, all I'm fighting are these weird fey creatures and Saxons and weird fey creatures are Summerland's get. Like that's their deal. Um, you can on a failed honor roll. Uh, I would, uh, I would uh, not give them the money and instead pay the ransom myself from my house, uh, without putting it on the uh, the back of Salisbury. Oh, interesting. Oh, so abandoning um, his own. Yeah. Uh, just first arbitrary test to start there then. Oh, I'm much more arbitrary. Ooh, just. Oh. oh, success on just. Failure on arbitrary. I think I'm going to stick to my word then. Yep. What's That's your, good. That's the what's, outcome I was hoping for. What's your annual income as a... Um, not as a... Ca well, yeah, what's your overall annual income? Uh, it's variable dependent on buildings, uh, but for the most part, I get 28 from being the Castellan of Vagon. That, that's more what uh, I'm thinking. So they yeah, might so they might withhold your 28 as Castellan until it's repaid. Salisbury, like Sarum. Okay. Right? That so sounds good. For, so for, four, four years yeah. uh, of... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't grand. sound good. doesn't sound good. It just, it's... It's probably the solution, but we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Um, That's fine. I'm yeah. good with that. Because we're, we're gonna we're gonna have a little scene with Virgil and um, some folks here in a minute. Um, I love Virgil and some folks. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna go a little further away for this next bit. We're gonna go all the way to Carlion, or just south of it in Scavalon. Where we follow uh, a the millions of miles that pass Ooh, you shit. hear on the wind echoing off the mountains. Fuck! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly disappearing into the distance. You know what I keep trying I keep forgetting to do? I wanna start doing in here doing this. Um I wanna type 504.2. And then it's there. And then when we go through the oh, logs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I keep forgetting Leather. to do that at the beginning. Yeah. Is that King Cadway guy still alive? Sure is. We should stop that. He's old as fuck, though. Yeah, feel free, yeah, by the way, feel free to take a look. Oh, shit. I don't know if I got the, the roll 20 feel sheet. Feel free to kill King Cadway. Yeah, I, I love all of his tokens on the map. Like, they're yeah, really, really helpful. Nice. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah feel free to... Uh, you know, I'm going to switch over to it, even though it'll be funny, because for a short bit, Mark will look like a Megan Shield, but that's okay. That's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, King Lot. I remember I remember being up there and having that guy. Oh, uh, the metamorphosis is almost complete. Uh, that's what Megan said. <laughs> Yes, uh, we, we are we didn't... one. We are legion. We are all. It's evil, Mark. No. Um, okay. 
I'm not sure how to switch you back to the, the, the fancy thing quickly. So we just won't worry about that too much. It's we are here. Feel free to look around, though, the map. Um, there are a whole bunch of tokens in such placed by the various people. You can see the divide now between those that are uh, owing fealty now to uh, Escavalon. So basically the border of the Forest Sauvage. All the way up That's to Lindsay, where it extends over. Yeah. Indeed. The, the only thing between you and uh, them right now really is Clarence and uh, Marlboro. Oh. And Genji. And also, someone's at. Yeah, yeah. They, that, but they don't have to pass through there to get to you. They can go up and around. That's true. That's yeah. true. Cool. That so. means the device is going to be on the front lines. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, back to our little, wee little story there. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not going to worry about those stupid, stupid shields. Because, damn it. Um, not that, not that it's ever going to bug me or anything, and I'm not going to stress about it until I fix it. So that's good. Um, but uh, yeah, Mark, we are uh, we're all the way over uh, in Escavalon lands. You've just said goodbye to uh, Sir Cormac, who's kindly guided you through the forest to find this little nunnery. Uh, shout out to Lassam Bruja, who. Uh, was in this little cameo. If you're curious how Florence got here, it was kind of uh, in a different game that we had a little bit of a cameo. But let's let's go ahead and uh, let's let's pick up right there, Mark. Why don't you roll me a d10? Let's see if anything changes as to uh, your arrival. Okay, d10. Mm -hmm. That's a six. Okay. Six it is. Uh, that's even. Okay, uh, and then just roll me a 2d100. Okay. Thirty-five and sixty-nine. Nice. nice. Okay, that was more or less what I was thinking. Anyways, um, <clears throat> you reach the monastery, or the it's actually more of a nunnery. Um, they do have some uh, some monks here as well. Um, one of the monks approaches you. He says, uh, "One sec, you are a famous knight. What's your what's your glory before this year?" Ten thousand. That is a famous knight. Can give you such a crick in the neck. All right. He says, um, Sir Florence, Sir Florence of the Axe, uh, of Salisbury, uh, Knight of the Sword. He seems like fanboying a little bit when he sees you. Yeah. Indeed I am. A pleasure to meet you, uh, brother. Brother Daffy. On the Dafford. Uh, what brings you out uh, all the way out here? Uh, I am in search of uh, familial ties. Uh, is there a um, uh, sister Felicit here? Felinit? Felinit, I think that sounds right, yeah. Felinit? It was on like Phyllis, that's what it reminded me of. Um Oh, uh There's like a hesitation. He says, Well, I'm not supposed to respond to that, um, but if I'm correct, that would be your mother. And Indeed it is. There is something of importance I must speak to her of. This way. So he will um, lead you through. Um, this is very clear like a Roman Christian monastery. You make your way through the entirety of the place and then finally 
uh, you see the back of a lady fetching water from a well. Or a, perhaps a nun, hard to say, but he stops there. She has her back turned to you. And you can see like her white hair, hints of perhaps a, a it's so white, perhaps a blonde once upon a time. She doesn't seem to notice you as she uh, does this. Why don't you give me a recognized roll plus five? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. But he'd never forget that face. She kind of turns to the side, wipes her brow a bit from the effort that she just went through, and it's there you kind of see her. We go up, Florence. Almost takes a step forward out of instinct before freezing for a moment. It just goes, Mother? She squints, and with Florence's new bearded visage, she's like, Rodri? No. No, that's your Florence. My, have you grown up? See, because Rodri, Rodri looked like Rodri when he was 16, and he looked the same at 26, and he looks the same at 36. Absolutely. I'll probably go gray by the time he's 46, but it'll, it'll mostly be the same guy, I'm thinking. But man, Florence is man a little was baby face. He was 18. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Florence is a little baby face guy for a long time. Oh, yeah. You know, heartthrob. He was in a K pop band, actually, before this. Absolutely. So, yeah. Oh, the case Thomas, stands you mean. For night, of course. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the night pop band. <laughs> yeah. I think with that, he just slowly steps forward and goes, It indeed has been some time, Mother. I... I hope you have been well. These odd... 30 years. Yes. Well enough, my boy. Uh, how are things in Salisbury? They are complicated. I do not know if you have heard, but Neil Robert, son of Roderick, sits upon the throne. But he is still a boy. Indeed. He was born the same year Egraine became queen. Or not far from it. Indeed. It's also born the same year as my own son. Well, uh... I hear that you are a baron now. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a title bestowed upon me by... Former king. As they do. I'm sorry to hear about yes. Lady Pomponia. Thank you. You would have... I think you would have liked her. She smiles. She was a smart woman. <laughs> She was known for it. I hope that she was kind to you, kinder than her reputation suggested that she was. <laughs> yes, yes. I know well her reputation. She was perhaps one of the most wonderful women I have ever met in my life. I'm unsure if I will ever meet another like her. Well, uh, I also... Have Why don't two other daughters? Two. He says, well, yes. uh, "My, uh, my apologies. You must be wary from the road. Can we offer you food and drink?" Yes, that would be wonderful. 
I, I was wondering if we might be able to, um, he looks to the, the brother next to him and then the inspector, if we could speak in private about something important. Of course, uh, I know the perfect place. That she leads you down to like a stream after you're probably f- fed and are, do you get impatient? Mm, yeah. Cause I think she's, um, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, courtesy probably. There. Um, if you want to do a skill perspective or you can do like, uh, uh, I guess reckless. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think there's really something. I'll do. No, he's going to eat because he's guaranteed to succeed on a courtesy. So I think it'd be better if it's probably like a prudent versus reckless. Yeah. So if you have any, either of those famous, you test that one. If you don't, you test whichever one you want. But if it succeeds, you don't test the other one. Okay. In that case, I will test prudent. Okay. Failure. Now test reckless. Success. Okay. Out, woman. Now I need you to make a courtesy roll. Uh, any negatives? Yeah, minus five. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Success, though. Okay. Yeah, you're 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 adjusted to having to be patient, even when you don't want to be, and so you yeah. grin and bear it, and you suffer through it. Eventually, he probably doesn't eat very much or drink very much. Right, that makes kind of sense. Stress, yeah. Um, and maybe you know she's pretty smart with those things. I think she might pick up on that, so she'll kind of go. I assume that you have something more important to speak about than simply catching up. Not that I don't appreciate the trip all the way out this way, but it is quite far out of your way. Whether your way be Cornwall or Salisbury. Indeed. I had something recently given to me by... A nice who was an old friend of my father's. With that, he'd reach in and pull out the, the, the letters that he has in, like, a satchel. He also gave me this. And he'd show the, the, uh, the seal or the, um, the, uh, emblem that belonged to, um, uh, the, uh, King Vortimer. She looks at the letters and I think like without having to test, you can tell that she knows what those are, but she says, um, such things should be forgotten. Sir Florence. She calls you by your formal title. I can't just forget. Yeah. I can't just forget about it, Mother. These days, it is nothing but lies and deceptions. Playing pretend at something that may or may not be real and chaos. I need to know. Is it true? Your Morganor raised you. He did right by you. Everything he did was for you. For the cause. For us. It was a mistake. A mistake. If Vortimer had lived, you would have been seen as a shame to him. And with him not living, you would have been a threat to Vortigern. Morganor took you on and loved you 
He raised you. You were his. The king was married when... And then she stops, leaving it at that. Why? Why raise me as his own? Why would... Why would he put me above his own children? Have you ever... Have you ever met a lord that you would do anything for? Not just one that you had to bend your knee for, to take a strike from, but one that you truly felt their cause. I thought I did. Once. That was Morganor. He would have done anything for King Vortimer. What am I supposed to do now? Keep living this lie? What would you do with it if you revealed it? What good would it be? You'd be an heir without a claim. And any claim you have would be a threat to Scavalon, or to Kerdic. Maybe there's something I could do with it. Maybe there's something. At least until... I don't know. I think she's trying to get a sense of how ambitious Florence is in this moment, too. She's met a lot of <laughs> ambitious knights. Yeah. In her life. It's a fright it's a frightening answer, Mr. Baron. Yeah. yeah. Uh it's I think it's a it's a it's a mix between ambition and a desire to do good. Which is probably terrifying. But it's it's again it's it's also it's shrouded by doubt, which he has from his directive trait. Mm -hmm. He's this kind of mix of emotions pulling him in many directions and that's very much why he seems to be kind of stumbling over his words despite as well trained as he is in etiquette and speaking my advice to you is this I don't know how long I have left, my son. I feel weaker every year. And if who gave you these is the man I'm thinking of, he's not long for this world either. These papers alone won't give you much credence or claim. It could be fabricated. What's worse than an imposter is an, or what's worse than a pretender is an imposter who claims to be a pretender. Perhaps if you were to take these to Father Dewey, 
The Waterman. He could hold them for your keeping, should they ever be needed. He is still young, uh, young for clergy anyways. I shall think of it. And um, I think she'll explain to like just in in the time, you know, around this. Then to do this in character, I think, you know, when it comes to his Scavalon, first heir of Vortigern is Vortimer. Vortimer's mm -hmm. line passes to their first yeah. legitimate heir, which would be Madrun. Madrun's first legitimate heir would be Nintelliad, and so you are yeah. quite a far. Out like of that, far on the line of succession. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still a threat in, in the pretender kind of format, right? Where so, a, a cause could get behind you to try and conquer that. Mm. There is a question mark, uh, but you you have insider knowledge that most don't. Um, mm. You know that Uther has an heir. And you, you're one of few who know that Merlin moved to keep him safe, not to mm. eat him or sacrifice him to a demon or yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But technically, Vortimer do... was once the king of Logris and Escavalon. Yeah. That was That's his true. title and claim once, once long ago. I think Florence is going to do a test to determine what his plans are going forward. Uh, does one of two things. He stores the papers away, or he uh, probably has some sort of confession and destroys the papers. Deceitful, he keeps them honest. Uh, honest, he's probably going to get rid of them. Interesting. Honest success. Yeah. Deceitful's higher, though. But that was That's it. true. Here's my question for you, though. Is that really the appropriate role, or is this a matter of what? What are we ultimately talking about here? You know, what is really at stake? Mm -hmm. Um. Is this a pride thing? Mm -hmm. Or is this a prudent versus reckless thing? Prudent would probably be carrying on with your not so meager lot in life. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. I think prudent and reckless would work. Why don't we I start think... with that? Okay. Let's start with that. I got an idea. So so right. you pick one, you roll it, unless one of them is famous, then you have to roll that one. You pick right. one, roll it, and only if it fails do you roll the other one. So choose your poison. Okay. Yeah. I think because it might be more fun, I'm going to roll Reckless. This may go horribly wrong. No, it's a failure. Okay. Uh, now test prudent. No, both also fail. Okay, okay it's perfect. These so now these might legitimately be the most tense rolls I've ever seen in this game. Like yeah. sitting on the edge of my seat right now. Straight up, this could entirely change the trajectory of change Florence. Everything. Doing, yeah, could change everything. Even if he hangs on to them, it says so much about. Uh, his character. Even if he doesn't do anything with them, he just keeps oh, it. Oh, it's so good. Day. It's such a good scene. I don't think you choose to abandon... The, or, sorry. You don't choose to go to Minevia, is the answer of that question. You're not going to mm. go see Father Dewey out at the, yeah. the very site where... You're, actually, hold on. That was Edric, never mind. Or uh, Edward, that was out, out in Minevia, not yeah. Florence. Um, that was your, the very first battle of uh, Favored Sons was in Minevia with Uther. 
Mm-hmm. That was that was against King Passion. Fighting up the um, Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what we're going to do now, do you have a famous modest or proud? No, both of them are, are modest is higher, but it's only a 12. Okay. You may choose modest or proud, and I want you to test it. Okay. I am going to test proud because I think that would be more interesting. Failure. Okay. Now test modest. Critical. Hell yes. I think you abandoned the papers. I think you're going to abandon the papers. I think it's probably going to be a scene, probably the one where Florence is like sitting at a fire looking over them. Yeah. And then he just folds them up and throws them in the fire and watches them burn. All right. Uh, roll a d4. Four. Okay. Uh, you are 16 minus now. I think that's a bold move to that's abandon. Bold move. Yeah. To it's abandon incredibly... claim towards kingship, right? It's also incredibly yep. honorable, too. Yep. It's the right thing to do. God, I'm gonna be th- I'm gonna think and be thinking about every alternate reality that could come from this moment yeah. for weeks, man. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I can I'll probably afterwards I'll talk to you guys about some of the ideas I had of where he could go, but probably good to keep going for now. Yes, Indeed. for sure. Okay, uh, Virgil, you're called to serum. Yeah. Uh, Virgil's this, time to do Virgil things. Yeah, this is a small gathering involving Robert, uh, his mother, um, uh, Lady Osliff. And, uh, and, uh, I don't have his token right now. Um, Erwin. All right. Interesting. <laughs> I hope they have not called me here, uh, regarding event, recent events. Uh, they like, oh no, what have I done? I think that's what you, pro- what's your suspicious score actually? Uh, not high, I don't think. No. Uh, 10 10. Yeah, you I don't think Virgil's like worried no, about you didn't much. Do anything wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're not calling you for this. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I'm right. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> yeah. In the con- in the conversation, um, mm-hmm. Lady uh, Ellen says to, to Virgil and Irwin. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, Lady Osliff being here means this isn't the small council, right? So it's like, what, what is what is going on here? What is going on here? <laughs> Robert speaks up and says, we've received, we've received another claim of ransom for Sir Edric from Lord Alabaster. Ugh. From Lord Alabaster, again? It seems... um, Erwin will speak up and say, Edric uh, wanted to create structure and order within the Wareside uh, Barony after its recent siege last fall. He led a counter effort that way seems that the forest folk must be united. His men say that they lost sight of him in the fog and they searched for him for days. Of course they did. At this point, Castle Alabaster is becoming more trouble than it's worth. Why are they asking for ransom this time? 100 Libram. Man, even Virgil doesn't have that. (laughs) Times are difficult right now. I'm not sure that any single person in Salisbury would be able to afford such a ransom. They're asking for a ridiculous amount. It's an insult. Uh... 
Uh, Alan will speak up at that point and, and say, I've spoken with Lady Oslif. We're prepared to pay the ransom to get Edric back. It would, we would withhold his income as marshal until Salisbury is paid back in full. The treasury of Salisbury is paid back. But I want approval from Erwin and Virgil, or acceptance at least, to this plan. Very well. Lady Oslef, you have my word that you and your husband will live comfortably. I'll pay for your expenses as needed. Edric's a dear friend of mine. I won't let him or his children be at risk. There's another condition. Lord Alabaster cannot be allowed to do this again. Under any circumstances. Oslov says, I would like to kill him myself at this point. Well, I'm glad that my brother got you a suit of chain mail then. Erwin says, should we address with Lord Alabaster this harm, it would mean addressing the alliance at the forest. It's hard to say. My impression of the man was not that he was of any sort of grace. I suspect that he is not going to play fairly with us on the same grounds that we would meet him. Either way, I'm a blade, not a pen. You decide what's best. You're better at these sorts of things. But if you decide that we burn his castle and the entire forest to the ground, I will make sure that it is done. Um, with that, uh, Erwin speaks up with a, like his own vote of approval towards this, and things move on. Virgil, on your way out, Erwin catches up with you as you're kind of mounting back up on your horse. He says, uh, Sir Virgil, might I speak to you on the road? Of course. I always have time for a fellow member of the council. What can I do for you, Sir Erwin? I would normally bring this to Edric, but I'm not certain how long, how much time we'll have until Edric's returned. Hopefully sooner than later. As his second, I am happy to take any responsibility for him while he is away again. Things are... Turning into a difficult situation here in Salisbury. And there are many knights who speak of not knowing who they can trust. One thing is clear. The names that don't fall within that realm are Sir Edric's, yourself, and mine own. I see. And these whispers, what direction do they come from, Sir Erwin? Many talk at the, at the courts. Normally I rely on Gareth to direct me in, in that way, but he's been away for some time. So I'm hearing things much later than I wish. No one is displeased with the way Salisbury has been operating. Save for a few short risks that I might not speak of right now. I would like to know that if I were to move against said risks that you would support me. 
I would not, Sir Erwin. But only because your name is too good for such things. Mine's already been soiled in the eyes of many. I'm feared. If you have names, I urge you give them to me. Short wrists will not stay that way. That's the job of the hounds. Very well, then. Good. You should come stay with us at Devices. Get an eye on the forest where Hedrick currently resides. It might help refresh your memory as to what we should be doing next. All righty. We're gonna... I, I think Erwin will accept that and he'll ride with you to Devices. I'm going to throttle this man someday. I'm going to just get gonna... Someday he's going to show his true colors, whatever color they are. And I don't think I'm going to like them. There's going to be a queue. There's going to be a full queue airplane style where people are going up to like slap and strangle this man. <laughs> Debatably, there's going to be a coup too. <laughs> and he might be involved. Now we'll find out. That Erwin man, he's as good as dead. Okay, so he, him and his Conroy from his position at, um, it's, where did he land? Um, I forget the name of his keep, but nevertheless, from his keep, because he's also a castellan. Uh, Frick, Tillshead, which is on the way to devices. Yeah. Yes, it is. Still said it's West like Lavington devices. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you make your way back up. Um, Edric, uh, roll, roll a d10, my friend. <laughs> yeah, Edric. Roll a d10. I'm so for angry. <laughs> Dude, Virgil's angry at you, too. It's Four. not your fault, but he's mad. Four. Okay. <laughs> Uh, roll 2d100, please. You arrive and it's on fire, I'm going to be so happy. Blaming the victim, Rebecca. Absolutely Edric's fault, my ass. <laughs> I'd be a captive either way. <laughs> I think we should blame this on the person who's really responsible. Lord Alabaster, who is basically standing on the, the walls of his castle and mooning us as we ride off into the distance right now. <laughs> um, I think we need to kill that guy, actually. I think so, too. But... We, we do have a lot of other problems to deal with. Grown. 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 Uh, Thomas, I want you to make a d20 roll against a 17. Absolutely. I did fight with honor. I just got shot in the face. Focus. <laughs> I'm I mean, writing it. Uh, three versus 17. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're going to make this a best of three. So I need to do that again. Ooh. Let's do it. They're making him fight in the pits. Oh, God. He's I like shirtless. It here. Oh, God. <laughs> and one more. Seven. Yeah. On your way to Alabaster Castle, um, as you're passing West Lavington, you are freed. 
Wes Lavington has sent a force out to look throughout the forest. They found you. They came upon the uh, those who uh, took you hostage. Um, and uh, yeah, you've been freed. Hell yes. So West Lavington, who are those guys? Do I do I? Yes, we've seen them before, but yeah, West Lavington used to be Sir Huin, which was like he was the last old guard guy that died not long after the uh, the uh, Salisbury tournament. He had his own Indeed. contingency. He was kind of a holdout, not a big fan of you um, at first, but I think he ended up siding with you in the long run. Um, Indeed, very honorable um, man. And th this uh, his son, Sir Gron, is. Uh, is um like just a young knight and they came out in in uh, were oddly successful i thought it was gonna go bad and they were gonna die <laughs> this is gonna carry on which could have happened but uh oh, that it, would have been rough uh but yes uh edric is incredibly grateful uh for the rescue and grateful even more than being rescued these guys dying <laughs> So what this means is that Alabaster was notified that they had taken you captive, and before before they got your body in Alabaster Castle, they pulled the trigger on asking for the ransom. So now they don't have you. Um, Indeed. Uh, and Edric will make sure that that ransom does not need to be paid. Yeah. Um, um, that is very good. Uh, Gronwa of uh, West wolf. Lavington is going to be a name that Edric's going to be keeping in mind for later. You know Let's what would have happened? Council. You know what would have happened to? They would have taken you to Iron Town Castle to be healed. Um, Indeed. You uh, see all sorts of fairy creatures here while, during your visit. Oh no. <laughs> Edric's favorite fairy, yeah. fairy creatures. They love I you. I just, I just imagine a pixie alighting on his window and him going, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Sees on it. I know you. You spoiled my milk. <laughs> Goblins and spriggins and a giant on your way up north. Uh, not, not just like a, not a regular giant. It looked like a giant, like warlord, like someone who's smart enough to, to speak Kimri language and uh, command armies to some degree. Oh no, he's multilingual. I don't even know giant. Yeah. Oh god, he looks like my cousin. <laughs> uh, yeah, Edric, uh, absolutely uh, worst time of his life. No, no, not the worst time of his life. His son did die. Uh, definitely an unpleasant experience being around so many fey creatures. Yeah. Um, but so that explains uh, being healed, he that is. explains the timing. That's why the so they they sent out the they sent the news to Alabaster. They had you captive, and then they were transporting you once you were at about a month. And well, how long would it take to come back from those injuries to a point where you could be moved safely? It was uh, one a, to one the point attack. I could be moved safely. Uh, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, no, just one week. Um, that I could be moved safely. Uh, for the rest to be fully healed, a lot. Uh, it's three times it yeah. seven weeks i think it was seven or maybe six weeks you know like i think they were playing safe because they don't want to kill you on a transport they'd be like losing mm -hmm. they'd be like losing you which they did anyways apparently but, yes um, but uh yeah so they had sent for for the notice and you managed to escape uh which ideal situation for you i'd say yeah, super great. I'm so glad they died, and I'm so glad that I'm not going to be a hundred Liberman in debt. I need that income. I'm spending a lot of my money to keep ugh, these fake creatures safe. Uh, ooh, he is... Oh, he's Honor 16, but he's Arbitrary 15. Oh, but he's Prudent 17. Yeah, um... He will Man, obviously... Yeah, he, he, he won't claim you like he won't try to hold you ransom he came to rescue you he doesn't ask anything i need you to test just or arbitrary though here absolutely um i will say regardless of the result of these roles uh his name is going to be kept in edric's mind for 
uh, further operations. Uh, that is a success on arbitrary. I think I think all that means is you have like bigger fish to fry right now. So it's like, yeah, I'll remember him. Also, we'll sort out I don't Sa- feel we'll sort out yeah. the Saxon invasion. After that, if you want a barony, <laughs> yeah. no, not barony. Uh, if you want castle and ship, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. Like you're like, we'll get to some kind of reward for you, but you don't feel overly compelled. Like, oh my god, you know, my life would have been in ruins. Uh, Thank you so much. You don't feel that indebted to him. Um. Uh, It's very much like even coming off of a major wound and grievous injury, the moment he's on his feet, he's like, very good. You have my thanks to work. Let's, uh... Congratulations, you did your job. Yeah. (laughs) No, he's not that callous. (laughs) Let's check in with Florence as we near the summer now. I'm assuming you're not going. You're not going to Menevia, so you're probably wandering back. I think on home, yeah. Um, where's home? Which home? Uh, Edmiston. Yeah. It, okay. I think specifically he has a plan to visit his father's grave, or Morganor's grave, I should say. Yeah. Uh, so you pass through, uh, Clarence. Um, give me a, uh, folklore test here. Ooh, folklore. It's more the common folk. I think I'm going to use folklore, not intrigue, when gathering from the common folk more often. Uh, like, in a common uh, folk setting, not in a, not in a feast kind of thing. Feast yeah, will always I be... Never told you- the story of Irish Jimmy. Now give me some information, please. <laughs> Irish Jimmy, my favorite. Um, Love Irish Jimmy. Yeah. My favorite of all the Irish, and also all the Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, so not too much on your way back. Um, maybe do a D10 real quick. See if anything... Um, one okay uh roll um 2d 100 real quick all right hey florence how come your mom lets you roll 2d 100 <laughs> well she just revealed to him that he is in fact the son of a king so she also That's definitely true. cheated on the guy he thought was his dad uh 23 and 59 i mean the, if it was the king you know like <laughs> But it was a king. The no. last time someone refused to let the king six, six years have his ago. way on that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what Uther said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, to be, just to be clear with that, and maybe Florence doesn't quite nail that down, it'd be interesting mm-hmm. if you didn't, because you're not reading and you aren't the most attentive of characters in general, if we've no. <laughs> gathered from that. You're a year older than you thought you were. Mm. Right? You are a product of King Vortimer's dalances, let's say, with an unwed your mother, Lady Flante. Was my mother unwed? I guess yep. Florence wouldn't know. Okay. Yeah, you know the year your your parents were. It's even in your okay. your history. Okay. Yeah. Your, this would suggest that Morganor took you, as I mentioned previously, they kind of hid you away when you were a little younger. They purposefully obscured your birth so that everyone thought right. you were Morganor's son and yeah, your mother's. And her, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's some loyalty. Like maybe like a loyalty t- nineteen or twenty somewhere in there. Just remember that, guys, when you want those nineteens and twenties and things. Um, so yeah. it'll come back. It will. I promise. Um, so uh, go back to bite you. All right, it always does. All right, Robert. I'll carry your son to term. <laughs> seahorsing it, just seahorsing it uh, all across the board. Yeah, just like a seahorse. Yeah, you get it. Oh, that's that's perfect. Okay, uh, uh, give me an intrigue roll, Florence. Same time. All right. 
something he's much better at. Go. <laughs> While you're passing through Clarence, you actually treat with some of the Clarence Lords, and they're very eager to find out sort of what you encountered while you're in Glevum, what you encountered while you're in Escavalon. Mm -hmm. um, but what they also share with you is they share sort of these rumors that have been emanating out of Summerland, where uh, you learn that Wells is currently under siege. So they've uh, Cornwall has Does actually. Know? Okay, it's Cornwall. Yeah. Idris has actually led an invasion into into Summerland. It was not a. Uh, it, it's official now. Put it that way. It was assumed, but yeah. now it's official. Um, you can't imagine like having so heard of Wells. You can't imagine it lasting long against Idris. Like, yeah, yeah. I think literally in his mind is like, oh, so he's already started. I should probably talk to my boss. I should probably <laughs> probably have a chat with him. On on top of that, um, you also hear rumors coming out of Summerland about a some some kid they're calling the Winter Prince that's there. It's sort of like hush rumors. I say that he's the being Rift? kept out of Summerland. Yep, that's fucked up. Yeah, I think he'd just be like, "That doesn't sound good for Summerland." <laughs> completely, <laughs> completely unaware. Yeah, some weird backwards pagan shit. Um, uh, you end up passing through Clarence. Um, I'm just gonna check the map real quick. Yep, straight up. The Winter Prince sounds like a bad thing. So, <laughs> uh, heading from Corinium, your best route is to go through Wandborough, and then you kind of continue down or Marlborough, right? Which we've we've established, mm. and then from there you head down into um. Probably the safer and more straightforward route from there would be like, uh, uh, no, actually, I think you would have gone through. What's your, what's your, um, what's your forestry? What's your hunting? Rather? Forestry. My hunt, uh, uh, his hunting is four. Four. Okay. So you probably like main roads. <laughs> That's what we're getting at. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you want to go more off the beaten path or on? So your options would be you could head down Corinium, headed towards Bath, pass through the fields north of Bath, and then hit another main road down towards Devices. Or you could pass straight through Marlboro. Uh, if you go the Marlboro I route, you'll be, over, you'll be passing past Devices and such. Yeah. I think he'll swing past devices. Okay. Okay. So you you had that route. I will take a. It's a very straightforward roll. So hunting roll plus ten. It's like a very straightforward yep. path. Well, these are paths I probably walk through a lot. Anyway, yep. marching up and down. Success. Yep. No problem. Uh, you can take hunting there too. All right. Uh, so we're going to move to the next scene, which is Florence entering devices. Uh, Virgil, it seems you have a guest that. heading from I do. heading from what looks like like from the route of Summerland. More, uh, no, you wouldn't be able to know that. Heading from the north, so you see them heading down towards devices now, along. Device is more like a pathway versus a proper road, right? But yeah. well, let's see what we have in store for us today. Uh, is Erwin uh, still with me? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I think. Uh, let's see which hounds are stationed at devices. Uh, the Timmies and the. Uh, <laughs> The Jimmies, which are the ones that are on me all the time, uh, Timmy. Virgil will get a contingent. <laughs> Virgil will get a contingent ready and uh, take them out to go and greet the stranger before they get too close. 
It was the Billies and the Jimmies, wasn't it? I thought. Uh, no, the Billies are the ones that stay at Durnford. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah, all these How strict... we have Relax. Yeah. Relax, Bob. <laughs> don't get confused here, don't, all right? Don't ruin the system. I got it under control. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, the Jimmies, the Billies, and the Timmies, yeah. All right, so this will only be... One of which, only one of which is still named, because the other one that I had named died, so... <laughs> This will be Erwin, Florence, and Virgil then. Ooh. Hi, Florence. As Florence enters. Virgil rides up and goes, The hell have you been? Ah, greetings, Sir Virgil. I've just been doing a bit of sightseeing. Right. In the middle of wartime, when every direction, except for the one that you're riding towards no that doesn't bullshit i'm saying bullshit calling bullshit wow. <laughs> with that he, he turns over uh to um uh, erwin and goes he's learning oh you're really on thin ice florence oh come now virgil just having a bit of fun i was um up in Escavalon to see family. Your family in Escavalon? Yes. Then my mother is a, a, Yes, my mother is a, a nun. A nunnery within his lands. Well, lucky you that you get to sightsee while everyone else is busy fighting a war. I know. I do feel quite lucky. So, what have I missed? What about your Lord? king, Sir Florence? He d doesn't call you to battle against Summerland. Evidently not. As I said, hmm. I've had a place here in Salisbury. Well, you're welcome to stay at Devices for as long as you like. Erwin's visiting for a time where and I think like there's like his face scrunches up for a second and he goes uh, just spending some time strategizing strategizing I see well would it happen to do with anything big happening in Salisbury no <laughs> now who's the one bullshitting who Kind of says to himself and shakes his head. Uh, no matter. I do not plan to stay here that long, nor cause any trouble for you. I'm just returning home. Which one? Edmiston. Ah. Well, glad that you can grace us once in a while. Erwin, uh, forgive me for not being pleasantly. Uh, not being presently kind to our guest. It's been a long week. Oh, it's fine. It's been a long week for me as well. But I imagine we both have business to attend. Aye. We all do. I'm certain of it. Sir Florence? Erwin says. Sir Erwin? Sir Virgil? And is, is Florence staying here, or is he going to kind of continue to ride on? No, either to, uh, ride on. Even. Yeah. Okay. It's basically like, anything really bad happened I need to know about? Yeah. And Virgil's like, no, it's fine. Yeah. Right, I'm going home. <laughs> it's, it's such a shame, because Liam's first instinct is, Mark, please, please pay the, please pay the <laughs> fine for us. Please, 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 please. <laughs> but uh, Virgil's like, I can't tell a guy who is a Cornwall guy that our marshal is missing. That's a bad look for us. <laughs> I, I I liked the, I've had a hell of a week. I too have had a hell of a week. I think we all have. And then meanwhile, <laughs> Edric just uh, on a wagon. <laughs> Again. Yeah. I think uh, Edric, one of the things you're dealing with is an actual, like, your knee is effed in a way that won't ever quite be the same on your yeah. left side like it, it's clear that like it hurts to walk and everything's been reset and the doctor assures you that's sort of the best they can do 
Um, yes. Gonna need to get uh, you a cool cane. Edric's body is failing him, and it's a testament to his skill with a blade uh, that he can learn how to, you know, do it without too much footwork. But it's like you said, on a horse is the best way that he is going to be able to fight without being knocked over on his bum leg. Only hope for him now is me putting all of the points into physical therapy, which is basically upping his dex, or magic. Perrin, do you know any people who can regrow legs? <laughs> so, um, as Florence is leaving, uh, Sir Irwin looks at Virgil and says, Do you think he was really up in the scavalon? Who knows with that one? He's like a... Like a swan. He's loud. And lots of people think he's pretty, but you can't understand a word it says. You know, <laughs> he kind of like laughs at that a little bit. He like tries tries to be serious, and he just like lets out a little bit of a laugh. He says, "He's the only exception I can think of of someone that would willingly welcome into our borders, while they owe their allegiances to a threat." I asked you earlier if you would back me. And I think it's time we dealt with that threat. I see. I don't mean kill no. him. But until Cornwall is away from our borders, should he really be here? Flirting with the Countess? Wandering to I and fro? I certainly don't think so. Edric has his reasons for feeling so comfortable having him here. And Lady Ellen seems to trust him for better or for worse. But I do agree, there is no such thing as sitting on two sides of a fence. He swore allegiance to King Idris and Earl Robert, Rod, Robert. One of those is true and one of those is false. They cannot both be the case. Especially Obviously, during times of war. I will consider your words. I will not do anything that would risk Edric's reputation. But I will keep an eye on him. I may do more than that. I am more than sympathetic to your point of view on this. It, it's almost like annoying. You, you keep looking for the the part of Erwin that's secretly aloof, and it's just not coming out. It for some reason, yeah. You know, I keep waiting for that. I he just doesn't keep seem to show it. You know. Yeah. I mean, after all, uh, wait, hang on. Uh... Gods! Oh, there may well. Hey! I don't... Marcus no, Kenny, welcome could, in. Could, could have been worse. What was that? Oh, <laughs> hold on. My dice, oh. like, it didn't pull me down. Okay, trust me. Do you want to test suspicions? No, no worries. Because uh, is that fair? I, I think I think I have already played it in a trusting fail, but not a suspicious success. I, I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. I think, uh, gang, why don't we take our one break for the night, and we'll come back for a, a short bit and play through the fall, and then I think we'll be ah. well poised to, uh, to close out on our next session, which will, I think, with the timing, might actually be in November. Anyways, we'll be back very soon. Yay. Like I am a nobody, a bastard, and I will make sure that I will create no bastard by my name. Because I, for better or for worse, whether I like it or not, I am no longer a maiden. I am a knight, and I hold true to that. 
You protected more than that. You... You stood by me when others might have let my mistakes be all I really was. You helped me. You saved me. And... I'm sorry I couldn't repay that favor ten times over. I find it offensive that they do not consider my father the clear and rightful heir.
classic scenario. There we go. <laughs> We're back. Uh, sorry about that. I don't know what I, I overheard that Obsidian Portal now requires some kind of special login thingy. They're probably trying to shut out bots and AI and stuff, which is what I'm yeah. noticing a trend of on wikis and stuff too. Anyways. I don't mind that. I don't... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no. that I'm good. I'm groovy. Is it me? What's <clears throat> happening? What? Skynet? What? what? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> where to go from here? Uh, let's see. We are moving through 504. Quite quickly, which was the plan. Um, maybe we'll stop. More to prepare for. Yeah, maybe we'll stop and talk about the discussion right now. Um, we'll kind of have you. We'll, we'll pull away from the vignettes for a second and just talk about some general news. Maybe we'll start with a general battle test and an intrigue test to start with. Success on battle. Success on battle and intrigue. I'm Success so on better intrigue. at battle now. Success on battle, uh, intrigue, and a fail on intrigue. Oh. I'm the mo I'm the odd man out. It's me. I'm the idiot. I'm the <laughs> asshole. No, that's why we love you, Virgil. Please sit down. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Am I the asshole for filling my intrigue role? Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for wanting to get rid of a guy that's currently serving another nation within my nation? <laughs> M38 and M40 slash 41, maybe? Hmm. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> uh, quick, <clears throat> kind of a quick update for y'all. Uh, the, let's talk about the Battle of Summerland. Yay! Um, oh, you know what? I can show you the Salisbury map because it's been a minute since we've looked at the Salisbury map. Yeah. Let's do it, and we'll show the show the chat too. Oh, who's that snake-like looking motherfucker in the lower right-hand corner? I don't know who you're talking about. That's you, Perrin. What are we what? talking about? What? Uh, it's What's Perrin's you? old evil. Um, oh, the evil guy. Evil <laughs> yeah. yeah. Evil Perrin. Who's okay. that Slytherin looking motherfucker? So, uh, first off, we'll draw your attention to a new dot on the map. Welcome to uh, Glevum, now being part of Nintelliad's realm, which now puts. Nintelliad on your localized map, just next to Clarence in Summerlin. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Yay. Um, and kind of by far has the biggest support, though a lot of it is allies versus direct um, bend of the knee at this point. Um, yeah, Nintelliad's power is, he's got the biggest polity within Logris. Yeah. So um, for the battle test... You all are aware that um, from reports from Duplain and um, the ruins of Winchester, which was, it's this one over here, right? Um, <clears throat> there is um, no movement from, uh, from Wessex this year. No sign of a muster, which be as skeptical as you want. I'm just telling you there's no sign. They, they go into Camlet Forest, and there's no sign of movement up the Test River, and there's no movement of uh, of an army sighted on the Itchen River or the road up Winchester at this time. Mm. <clears throat> and those are reports from Silchester, who are acting as your allies at this point, right? Indeed. <clears throat> so those are actually communicated so by way Camelot of Forest. Lady Jenna. Yeah, they go into Camelot Forest and then do, do do they come out or do they remain there and go somewhere we don't know? That would be right. lovely, honestly. 
marching an army through a forest is never a smart move either. <laughs> right? It just isn't. Like No, definitely. Like even I mean, even if most of your people are infantry, uh there's still a lot of problems. They are That's Saxons, one of the reasons though. that's one of the reasons why Summer why uh Salisbury's remained so like untouched by a lot of the conflicts because we've really only got two or three main ways in everything else is forest and mountains mm. uh for those who pass intrigue you've learned that cornwall is uh, up far in the wells maybe a bit even past it um spread out it seems like it's a major force uh rumors have it that it's like two-thirds or more of idris's full fighting force into summerland um i have a question about specifically the action that i was taking uh yes. Do I know if that has succeeded or not? I imagine the money is no longer within my coffers uh, and Constenian le left with them. I think this is a race condition for did Constenian leave before you got captured or went missing? Uh, Constenian definitely did leave before I got captured, unfortunately. <laughs> um, he, in my mind, he, when Nineveh uh, was received by Winterborne Stoke if she went there, uh, as Edric requested. Uh, he went as escort with the money, so that the money could be used to hire Mercedes. Well, but it sounded it sounded like you were saying earlier that you still had the ability to revoke it, which, which would suggest that... The That's a good point, yes. Yeah. So, I think what we need here probably is just a high-low call um, coin flip. Uh, call high or low. Let's go high. There you go. You get the you get to make the call. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. So. Um Kinstanian bead fucking feet. Uh he has two problems to face, which is whatever is in the forest, uh, and Cornwall. Uh he's making the best time he can in a way uh to get to Summerland and Cadwe's court, uh, or any of the nobles beholden to him that haven't been conquered by Cornwall. Uh, well, I, I don't yeah. think that was your... If I understood your activity, it was actually to hire mercenaries. Was yeah, it not? But I mean, why would you go to Cornwall to hire mercenaries? Oh, to Summerland. Or to Summerland to hire mercenaries. Wouldn't you want to hire Fair mercenaries enough. and bring them into Summerland? Probably? Yes. It was, yeah. more, it was more an additional kind of layer of deniability. But yes, hiring the mercenaries, bringing them in. Uh, and I don't have an updated picture, but this is uh, Kador. Is that who, whose unit you were seeking to? It is Kador. Okay. Yep. Kador has an existing chip on his shoulder against um, uh, against Cornwall yeah. and King Idris. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> one sec. Furthermore, and it's okay if it isn't, uh, I did talk to Liam about the possibility of the black dogs being there, unless they're busy, because they are up north. We'll address uh, that in a, in, in a bit. Yeah, yeah, indeed. But I don't think you have the ability to hire or even send Kinsteni into both. I think... I no. think uh, yeah, he's only one guy, and we've only got so much. And Perrin would already be in motion for the year by that point, by the time you get to yeah. him. So we will address... or Sorry, we should call him Percy at this point. The black dog. 100%. Yeah. We, are doing, we are doing our best, uh, but he is, he's one second son of one relatively poor house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you do, you do hire Kador's unit. We'll say that's successful. Uh, what you know is that Summerlin's... Uh, Cornwall's throwing a lot at it. And this doesn't seem yeah. like they have any intention of making this a short-term siege. Or a long-term siege, rather. Indeed. All we need um, to do is A, buy time, B, show support. In so doing, we can achieve other strategic objectives. The other condition that the intrigue will, will verify is that a lot of people wondered if Dintelliad would try to race Cornwall to conquer Summerland, and there's no sign of um, 
No sign of warring actually out of his cavalin this year. Apparently, That's surprising. for the first time in a few years, they are probably resting and restructuring and reorganizing. Yeah. That's good for potentially the black dog being able to come down. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. And we'll get to that in a minute. Because I think, I think what I'd like to do for this last leg is just verify some priorities for you guys so we can close out properly. Let's, um, Let's start with, uh, let's start with Thomas because it's been a while <laughs> for you. Uh, for Edric, what are you doing now that you have been brought back to your family safely? It is uh, uh, probably about the third week in summer at this point when you're yes. brought back. Um, Edric will, uh, as far as personal priorities uh spending Just time with his wife and yes uh spending time with his wife and children that said there is also a prisoner who is maybe a fae in his dungeon <laughs> yep mm -hmm. uh but spending time with his family is more important he doesn't know what they eat all right uh what is your love family uh, love family is 20. It is an exalted passion, and okay. he loves him so much. All right. Uh, test generous for me. Is generous famous? Uh, let me see. Uh, it is not. It's 13. Okay. You can choose which one you test first. Uh, let's do generous. Success. Okay. No Shall need to so test. Much? You can just, nope, okay. you can just tick it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, and then we'll go to Constenian. So for Constenian, um, we, we've already declared that he will be successful, but let's see how successful. I need a hunting test. I need either diplomacy or intrigue. Uh, intrigue will be a minus five if you choose that one. <laughs> Bummer. I I don't believe he has diplomacy. Yeah, I don't so probably think intrigued. he would have if it yeah. were a skill, but yeah. um, let's do hunting. Okay. Uh, success, and a pretty good it, one. It is so funny to me that diplomacy is not a skill that any of us start. Like, you have to be, you have to be brought to the concept of diplomacy. That's it. <laughs> Everything else is just... Indeed. Eh, maybe we hit him with a mace? I don't know. <laughs> Edric's diplomacy is 15, so he's worked on that. Uh, and oh, let's yeah. do intrigue. The differentiator, too, and this Success. this is their argument for it, is like mm -hmm. int intrigue is your standard, I'm a knight, and from a knight's perspective, I'm treating and meeting with other nobles. Yes. And, and diplomacy yep. is I'm a lord of some sort and I'm negotiating with other lords of some sort. Yeah, I'm, I've got authority to, yeah. to negotiate stuff. So, yeah. so, so the first time you guys had a point in that is when you went to Cornwall. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Oh, those are the good old days. Mm -hmm. Back when they weren't invading us. Uh, it is a success on both for Constenian. Uh, he knows the forest a lot better than his brother. That's good. Uh, that that worked out, and then I think uh, the final piece. Uh, hmm. Happy birthday, Cadwy! Uh, I bring a gift. Again, you're not talking to Cadwy. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you're organize. You're you're speaking with. I'm sending mercenaries. Yeah, and yeah, and Kador is is still based out of uh, Wandenboro. Wandenboro actually, um, he's still based out of Gentian because that's where you guys hired him. So Indeed. previously, it's an undead monkey. <laughs> Indeed, it's the <clears throat> monkey Jack. I think that uh, roll a skill of your choice that you can justify for Constenian. Uh, for Constenian, let's go. And then give me a give me a narrative dance. little tweak on what it is to for his do dance. summer into fall. Um, I'd say let's go courtesy um he's been doing a lot of stuff and mostly keeping it quiet uh but not in a way that looks suspicious yeah. uh he's doing a lot of 
unofficial things, uh, but trying to do it in a very official and honorable way. That's fair. So let's try that. My other pick would have been orate, but my orate is a two. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Success on courtesy. I think you should have tried swimming. What is swimming? I think it's also two. Yeah. His swimming is two. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Put him in the woods, he's good. Put him in the forest, uh, he's fine. Put him in the water, less good. Less good. We will go next to uh, Inmistin. So we're going to go with Florence and then... Uh, Rodri is in a different conversation right now, so we'll just do Florence. Rodri is busy. <laughs> Prince is off in another castle, so uh, why don't we uh, why don't we find out what you're doing here, good sir? Sure thing. I think Florence is either doing one of two things: he's either reporting back to King Idris, uh, or he's playing diplomat slash spy in Salisbury, trying to spy on information about the current capacities. Actually, no, because he kind of already knows it. He doubts it's changed that much. <laughs> so yeah, I think they're probably, if... They're probably not in a better yeah, spot. It probably probably hasn't changed much. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll warn you to... too, I think you know that you don't really have a free pass right now. You feel like every time yeah. you pass another noble, their eyes are watching you. This year, yeah. it's really changed. You're really, you felt yeah. it in devices and you're feeling it the whole way down to Edmiston. You feel, for the first time, you don't feel welcome in Salisbury. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, yeah, you're a diplomat in an age of war. Yep. 100%. You Pretty represent the enemy right now. Pretty much just waiting you're expelled. Yeah. yeah. Or one of them. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think then he's going to begin his investigations uh, down into Dorset. As he's looking for a specific boy that um, uh, Mor Mor uh, yeah, Morgan uh, asked mm -hmm. him to find. That was a few years ago. So he yep. wants to actually finish that request off and give him the ring that he was given. Okay. So I think he's, he's, he's going to take a leave of absence. For sure. I like, uh, I, I like how we've got ADHD nights and uh, procrastinating nights. It's the classic kind of side quest thing where you're like, oh shit, I should probably hand this in. Hunting folklore intrigue. Uh, Florence will bring his hunting dogs. Because he does have those. Assuming uh, I could to aid me. This is not like, you're not really hunting through a forest. Okay. This is more like you following a trail. So it's uh, yeah, uh, I will give you that. Uh, I will give you... I don't want to give you a giant bonus for for hunting. It's like a 1d6. It's a, it's a 1d6 yeah, for the dogs. Perfect, yeah. yeah. You, I'll allow that. It's just for following a trail through a forest. Yeah. I can't so believe you're not bringing six. your other <laughs> hounds, the ones that hate you. I know. Uh, so hunting. this probably won't add any suspicion, you know, going outside of the Salisbury borders again, Ooh. returning should, yeah, should exactly. be. Uh, yeah. What were the other roles? Uh, intrigue four. and folklore. Uh, intrigue, folklore. success, folklore, failure. Okay. Uh, so two out of three is bad. <laughs> I did get critical on hunting. He did. Get, he did. Get critical yeah, I, that's true. That's that one's probably the. I mean, it could be the worst because you end up in one of those and you end up captured by alabaster or whatever. Right? Um, but uh, <laughs> um, well, it's a new year, isn't it? Yeah. Why? What? I will use my upgrade on the football roll to make it a success rather than a failure. You sure? Yes, this is important. Okay. I just got to cast out. It's my job as a GM. Um, so, <laughs> I understand. Uh, yeah, so you, sure you head down to Dorchester. Uh, you treat with some of the nobles. You treat with some of the locals. You find out that a lady uh, conscripted, an older lady, like a, more like a, um, an old Roman lady, an older mm. Roman lady. Uh, All right. You really paint me a picture here, Bob. Yeah. Conscripted <laughs> him. I, I'm, it's not 
is you know a 80 year old something I'm teasing. it's like yeah, a uh yeah mid- middle-aged lady let's say that um not a young maiden or anything conscripted him you remember his name akalon right yeah. conscripted him akalon. into service and that he's in bath in summerland right now son of a bitch i was just there <laughs> you haven't been to summerland Oh, uh, that's true. He was in, yeah, he was in the area. He was in the you were, direction. You're right, though. Yeah. You were real close. Like you could have, you could have, yeah. like from devices. Uh, probably. Another, yeah, another like um, three hour ride. You could have been to Bath. So you're like, <sighs> I was yeah. God damn it! Now I'm gonna go back the way I came. Yeah. <laughs> rides off in the direction of Bath. Whether or not he gets that within the end of the year is. Yeah, I think up. I think we'll move you into like fall. So we'll start there. With, that's yeah. what you're doing next uh, at the beginning of the next session. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move next to Virgil. Uh, Virgil, what about your priority through the fall? Ooh, uh, well, Irwin's given me a set of names. Yes. Uh, that name was pretty much one. Oh, okay. So he, he had one name, and that guy's out faffing about. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I think Virgil's going to m- set up a meeting with Edric about about Florence specifically. Okay. Let's do some character to character stuff. We haven't done any of that. I'll try to. I'll try to keep it short. Yeah, you're good. We need to talk about Florence. Edric. Sir Virgil. I appreciate you agreeing to meet me. We have to talk. Of course. Is this a social call, or would you prefer to get right to it? I don't think there's much of a difference for you and I, is there? No, no, there isn't. But one has food. Please, tell me. First, how's your leg healing? Well enough. It was an unfortunate blow that struck me low, and even more unfortunate from who it came from, for he was wearing my face. I do not know quite how he fared, but I know that many of my captors died, something I relish in. Something needs to be done about Alabaster. It does indeed. We have confirmation now that the same people who attacked the Wearside Hundred are in league with him, and that this conclave uh, is a united front against us. Then I would go so far as to call it a declaration of war. It'll wait, Mm. but it won't wait long. Indeed. We still have issues with the Saxons, no matter how quiet they might be being. But once the immediate threat is dealt with, we shall turn our eyes to that of the Fae. Your leg. It means things have to change, Edric. In what ways? I mean no insult to your pride when I say it's obvious to everyone that you've slowed too much. You can hardly walk without a limp right now, and though many are whispering that it will heal, I think you and I both know that it'll take you years before you're back up to fighting standard. Fighting standard, it has not changed. But you are right in that it causes flashes of pain to even stand. I am slowing not just with age, but with injury. It will recover, but until then, I am weakened. You let my brother charge into the front lines when he didn't have a sword arm. I know what it means to want to pay respect to the role that we are given and our purpose. But you're not a soldier anymore, Edric. You're the Marshal of Salisbury, and your position is too vital to risk any more on the front lines. I will say this much. I agree. And it is my great shame. Sorry, someone's at the door. (laughs) Someone knocks. 
So, Edric. <laughs> Not now, please. Yes, excuse me. Yeah. But yes. Right in the middle of the river stream. Yeah. Um. But Edric will say, and it is indeed my shame that I am not taking to the front lines as much as I would have. In the past battles, that glory was yours. The fact that I was caught unawares was a mistake, born of enchanted fog and the forest there. I assure you, I know my role and my responsibility. It has to change. Edric, you're too valuable to lose to another ransom or to fall in battle. There is no one who can replace you. I'm not the same. I have the luxury of fighting on the front lines because there are countless knights who are like me. There is no one in Salisbury like you. I mean it's this not. with the greatest possible compliment. There is none like you either. You may think yourself a frontline soldier, and indeed that is where you excel, but Don't you matter deflect. a great deal. Don't deflect, Edric. Ah, you We're noticed talking. then. We're not talking about me. Indeed. If you want to make a deal, the day you can regularly beat me in a fight again, on foot. You may serve Are you absolutely you wish to certain serve. you want this wager? I've seen you limp. If I need to break your leg worse, I will. Don't take that risk lightly. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm mostly modest versus proud, but <laughs> my sword is still 27. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna You're roll modest, plus. yeah, I'm gonna roll modest versus proud here, uh, to see you if Edric takes choose, it personally. You choose which one, unless it's, uh, famous. Yeah, choose one to roll. Uh, modest. That is a success on modest. I think Thank on God. a success <laughs> at modest, Edric goes, and you can tell there is a cool analytical gleam in his eye as he looks you over. Um, and in his head, he goes, yeah, I could still take him. But what does that prove? It's just friends fighting. Um, and uh, he says, that will not be necessary. I hear your words and I understand. Uh, but you can see there is no, he is not intimidated by, by that uh, wager there. Uh, he just isn't taking it. See to it, Edric. You need to lean more and push less. I'm not telling you this as your friend. I'm telling them this. I'm telling you this as your second. Indeed. And it is a lesson that does need to be learned. But, so long as there is anarchy, there will always be a need to push. For now, though, you are right. Then there's right. the other matter. Sorry, there one more thing. No, I'll keep it. Will, it will keep it short. Yeah. Uh, Another thing, Marshall. Then there's the other... Uh, just one more thing. Uh, then there's the other matter. I know you and Florence are close. But things are getting too dire for him to continue to sit on the fence. Tell me you have some arrangement with him. That you know something that I don't. And that you're not just being foolish by letting him continue to walk in and out of our walls. I am fully aware that he has been sent here as a spy by King Idris. A duty in indeed. Indeed. A diplomat here has no use. I believe that King Idris would have done the same to other lands as well. With this knowledge, I have done my best to obfuscate certain pieces of information, but he knew most of what needed to be known already. I have people on him and people on his people. What value does Florence bring to Salisbury? Florence is a talented knight, a loyal friend, and more importantly, at least in terms of the larger strategic layer, 
uh, one of the houses here are quite loyal to him. Uh, and hmm, I'm wondering if Edric should mention the the you know Pendragon stuff. I don't. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You can roll the dice on that one if you want, buddy. I have no idea, Virgil. Yeah. How Virgil would react to that shit? I don't think he will. In this case, uh, he will say, "The risks are known and minimal, and I mean this in the greatest of compliments to him, yes. and perhaps that which is cautious. I would prefer to have him where I can see him." both because he is my friend, and also I have tasted him as an enemy. He is a dire one. He doesn't decide soon what side he's on. He will remain an enemy. Not become one. Remain it. Indeed. If he does not decide one way or the other, he is loyal to Cornwall. Whatever that might mean in the larger scale, it will mean bad things in the short term. You can't keep putting off things like this, Edric. And other nights I thought are starting you said to talk. I should push less. Lean more. Doesn't mean inaction. It means having others do it for you. Look, I know that he's... I know that you and him are close. I've never been able to find common ground with him. In the way that my yes, that much did. was obvious. You two do not like each other. But regardless, other knights are starting to talk. And his presence makes them uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. Right now, it's going to cause more problems than it solves. So tell me that he has some value here besides making you feel more comfortable. He does have value. As mentioned previously, the strategic layers with Idmiston. And in addition to that, the knights being suspicious of him, that is no problem. It is a solution. Removing him from the small council would likely be a clever move, but we shall see what occurs when we speak to the count. The Earl. And I need to roll something real fast. Oh, yeah? I do. I do. Ooh. Oh, no. That was, that was with my directed trait, trusting Sir Edric. Would you like advantage? <laughs> I don't think I can give you advantage. <laughs> I don't think you can give me advantage on that. I think I can give virtual... you advantage. I'm not <laughs> I think Virgil scowls at that a little bit and goes, I pray you know what you're doing. You're betting a lot on one man who has shown himself to not be trustworthy. I assure you, I do. One way or then the other, won't... it needs not to be worried about much longer. Then you won't hear about it from me again. I want you to know that your concerns matter to me, and it is good that you bring them here. And the notion that many distrust him is as pleasing as it is a thing to keep a lid on. So long as they do not distrust the administration, his presence here reflects on the administration. And if you aren't careful, their distrust in him will become distrust in you and Sir Robert, or in Earl Robert. The former I can deal with, the latter is unacceptable. Agreed. Oh, we have a, we have a redeemed advantage. I don't know if that's too far out of Ooh. the gate. No, no, I'll no, I. I, I appreciate that, but I actually, I think it's a more interesting character moment to, can I reject the advantage? That feels mean. <laughs> keep it, oh. keep it, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it for later. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll use it somewhere else. Thank you, thank you, uh, Lissam Thank Bruva. you, Lissam <laughs> Uh I think, I think that's good for me, if, if that's good for you, Thomas. Yeah, that's good for me. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, uh, so because Edric, uh, he's got love sort of victory. He loves Sir Florence, but also <laughs> fully aware. Uh, he knows uh, as well as Florence does the arrangement that Florence has here. I mean, they've talked um, about it. <laughs> yeah. Folks. Can I ask? Can I ask you a favor uh, as well, Bob? What's that? Can I lower my trusting Sir Edric a little bit? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think so. I'd say that's fair. Trusting yeah. Edric is a is a tenuous notion to begin with. I mean, he did kind of like was like, I understand what you're saying, but you don't quite understand the situation. Indeed. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll one d three. Oh. It's very it's very right. on point with Arthurian stuff too. Like there is a lot of things mm. that fall apart in Camelot because Arthur trusts his knights. You know, and Indeed. and mm. isn't willing to to make the. Uh, man. I now trust Edric exactly as much as I trust Sir Irwin. Yay! That's good. <laughs> I like Sir Irwin. No, that's bad. That's bad. That's I, I Bob said it. I keep waiting for the leaf in him, and it hasn't dropped yet. But it's gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gotta. It's gotta. <laughs> I'll keep betting on red. Sure, it gotta, it'll pay off someday. <laughs> yeah. You technically could use the advantage there, but I assume we're not. Um, so yeah. the last thing we need to do uh, for tonight is just decide. Uh, so we're going to just we're not going to play into it too much. I think that'll be something we touch on next week. But we need to know where Percy will be. Uh, wow. If if um, the only war this year is somerset is that true hold on yes yes it I think is so yeah uh the Saxons haven't that, attacked us yet in that case that sounds like where the black dog needs to be um word was given to him uh about a certain arrangement there and uh if king natalia does not need his services this year he's going to play it off as Someone important to me lives in in Summerland. I'm going to go down there, but I will return to your service. Uh, they, Summerland's only able to pay like they pay garbage compared to Cornwall. I assume that still doesn't matter to you. Like you'll just be no. barely Correct. recuperating your costs for being there. So this is more That's of a okay. mor moral yep. piece. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I bet I like. I think he's let a couple of his closest, um, his closest men like in on the true purpose of what the the black dogs are for um what his troop is for uh i think uh for them he's going to be like i need you to back me on this one some of the men are going to question it but we're serving a purpose here understood all right we'll uh we'll get into that in more detail uh for now we're going to go ahead and wrap the session um Let's uh, quickly do some outros, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll close her out. We'll start with you, Thomas. Hello, uh, my name is Thomas, and I have been playing Sir Edric of Winterbourne Stoke, Marshal of Salisbury, and Arrow Magnet. Uh, <laughs> I have had a wonderful time. Uh, it's been it's been a good thing, and I am waiting for the other shoe to drop, uh, as I expect it will soon. You know, normally I would just say you're being dramatic, but in this case, you're just goddamn right at this point. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Missile weapons yeah. curve to crit me. Yeah. Uh, Mark. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I was just checking out our handy dandy Discord. By the way, did you know we have a Discord? Come check us out. Lots of fun things on there, such as shit posting and memes, notifications on whenever we go live. As well, that's where we run our cool vampire LARP, as well as a few other things. And if you join, you'll be able to get notifications of new series that we do that we are doing every time they happen. Uh, I've been Mark, aka the Cat's Meow, uh, playing Sir Florence of Edmiston, uh, who is now, uh, I think, uh, redefined himself or, or found himself back on the path. He's no longer got this kind of. Um, what would be the word? Pretendership. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, wait. <laughs> heavy is the head that wears the tits, or whatever. 
right? Exactly. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I think it was, it's really close, I think, really. Really yeah. close. <laughs> Liam. Uh, otherwise, oh, oh, sorry. just oh. quickly. Uh, otherwise, I also do uh, other things, such as I yeah, run uh, a Dark Ages campaign on my uh, Cats Meow channel, uh, which you can watch on Twitch or on my YouTube channel. Uh, links of which are uh, on the Discord, and I will probably post, unless I, I think the bot's going to fuck me over, so I need to set something up for that later. I, did, I just is, shouted you out, so you can go to uh, okay. his uh, Twitch channel, and then from there, find your way to the backlog, right? You probably have your backlog link. Yeah. Yeah, so. I believe the link is on there, yeah. yeah. Point is, click on there, come join us, watch some fun vampire times, and uh, join us tomorrow for our new episode. Uh, I have been Mark, aka The Catch Me Out. Good night. Uh, did you guys know we had a? Did you guys know we had a Discord? <laughs> uh, we've got a Discord, as Mark Mark always says. Um, yeah. Uh, hi everybody. I'm Liam. Uh, I played Sir Virgil of Durnford. Uh, I have something to plug as well. Um, recently, a couple friends of mine started a podcast. It's called On with the Motley. Uh, it's very fun. We take a friend of ours who's unfamiliar with one of our passions and. Uh, we explain that passion back to them in a fun way that's fun and dramatic and interesting. Uh, our first episode was on Doctor Doom from Marvel Comics, and our second episode, which just came out last week, is on the Greek tragedy and a number of Greek plays and epics and things like that. So um, both are great shows. They're really fun. Feel free to check them out. We're on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts right now. Uh, yeah, give it, a, give it some love. Leave some likes and comments. Make sure that I know that uh, Ticking Time Bob sent you here. Tell them that Ticket Tie Bob set you. Right. Awesome. All right. Uh, and I'm Bob. Uh, so first thing I want to just make a note to is, is directly to my players. Hang out for about six minutes after. We have a new thing we're doing. Uh, we are doing a after session quick recap of each of the games. Those go up on my... Uh, what's what's the Patreon? There we go. They go, they go up on my Patreon as individual right after the show so if you miss an episode you can find out what happened in six minutes right from this cast it also will that. go to the to the players of that particular game so they'll be able to quickly re refresh themselves from the last week after uh, a season or so we'll just amalgamate them all together and throw them out on the youtube if someone wants to suffer through an hour and a half of recaps it'll be there if you'd rather do that uh, but with no editing back. yeah just back to back and back to back. And back maybe to a little editing. Yeah. We'll see. A uh, <laughs> couple more announcements. Uh, I have, uh, it's not yet scheduled, but uh, making plans to do a, uh, a react to John Borman's Excalibur with uh, Eric Volgaris and AP Gaming Real, uh, where we're going to have to cut an incredibly lot to pull that off. Uh, 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 so Yeah, I might know some tricks for you. I might know yeah. some tricks for you. you can put a little Indeed. dancing anime girl on the screen, and it, it, it apparently it helps. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, we're uh, we're gonna do that because Excalibur is probably the closest thing on screen to Lamorte de Arthur, which is what the Great Pendragon campaign is based on. Uh, also, have uh, an upcoming Call of Cthulhu uh, Masks of Nearda Thotep, uh, which will probably not start until somewhere in November. Uh, looking so for, excited. yeah, uh, looking for kind of an experienced cast with that one. And I want to see if we can, um, you know, bring together some different streamers from different communities and, and play that one out. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. Uh, uh, but looking forward to it for sure, especially branching out. I feel like I'm just a, a Chaosium pimp at this point. That was by accident, but um, if you asked me like three years ago if Chaosium was my favorite company i would have said no but it turns out that i always liked cthulhu and i absolutely love pendragon so here it is open pendragon we have two campaigns one filled one not and we also have probably one or two sessions of random drop-in style pendragon if you're interested in just checking out pendragon great place to start won't show you the full meal deal probably but at least it gives you a taste and uh, hopefully we can steward some people to feel comfortable enough to gm the game themselves out of those sessions i think that's ultimately what i what i want i want to promote a game that i think is awesome that's my goal um and 
yeah, that is, I think, everything I wanted to cover here. Uh, next week, I think we are on for Gentlemen of the List, so we'll be taking a break from this. And then I think I'm away the 27th, so I think we're back in November 3rd for this game. Oh, gotcha. yeah. Heartbreaking. I know. I know, it's true. I'm sad about it. It was a really good session. <laughs> Thank you guys uh, for the wonderful session. Let me just see what we're at for numbers. Nah, I don't think we're not... We're not six. My ruling is like if we're at like 10 or so, I usually uh, raid yeah. out. We won't raid out with this. But thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Farewell. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.